Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Taste of Premier. Uh, this is going to be part three of uh, the uh, Docker series that we've been doing with Rozzy. And uh, I, I'm excited about it. We're going to talk about the Azure Container Service. But right now, I'm Schrodinger's host because I both am and am not wearing, let's go with shoes. All right, so with that, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the container service and what it does and um, how we are using that. So the container service is basically it's um, it's not in itself uh, a clustering platform. It's basically like a hosting service, and it runs. It allows you to basically provision uh, DCOS, Kubernetes, and Swarm uh, clusters, and it will basically provide you that hosting option. And the reason why you may want to do this is, first of all, if you wanted to save time on productivity, you can do that because creating these clustering platform and maintaining them takes time and resources. And um, you may want to offload that to service like ACS. The other thing is that, that the ACS itself um, is open source now. So what we did is um, we have, if I go back here real quick, and go to this uh, Git location, you will notice that the ACS engine here is open source. So a lot of customers wanted to take a look into like, hey, how Microsoft developed this, um, and if they wanted to run it locally, they can actually do that. So there is like, a, it's not like a, there's, a, there's something hidden there. It's out there, you can look into it, um, you can actually create like a pull request. So it's pretty much like open source at this point in time. So the idea here is that, that you have options here, um, which particular platform you wanted to run. And um, we basically, right now we are supporting Kubernetes, DCOS, and so on, which is pretty much right now, the, probably the top three in the market. If there are new arrivals and they are well received in the market, the chances are that they will end up in the ACS service. It's really driven by the, uh, the it's customer driven if the customers are using a particular service, then there's a good use case for it to be here. Uh, so a quick word around orchestration and containers is um, it's just like an FYI. Uh, they're not same. Sometimes the lingo get a little confusing because uh, containers are unit of deployment um, and orchestration is something that is um, not essentially the packaging uh, itself. It's basically uh, multiple things. It basically allows you to do the automatic failover, uh, monitoring upgrades, making sure that, you know, which node is running what type of cluster, making sure that uh, everything is up to date and things like that. So you can do a lot with orchestration. Um, not every orchestration, uh, or let me put it this way, you can use orchestration engines like DCOS to run non-container workload. So it's not necessarily important for every organization to support containers, although most of them do, and most of them, we're gonna see them today, of course do, but uh, but they can be more broader um, in terms of their usage pattern. So, so these three we, um, we support today, uh, Swarm is basically um, a product from Docker. Um, it serves basically uh, standard Docker API. Uh, it's actually super easy to work with um, in terms of uh, the the commands and everything. Kubernetes is another one, uh, gaining a lot of traction in the market, uh, so we support that. Um, it's actually the only one right now at the time of this recording that has support for Windows container. I think it's still in preview, uh, but uh, they do. And then we have the DCOS. Uh, probably one of the most mature one has been around for a while. It is started as um, an orchestration tool which supports non-container workload, uh, but now it also supports uh, container uh, base loads. So let's go back and take a look what we have in our environment. So first of all, the first thing you have to do is you have to create a cluster. So how do you do it? So there are many ways to do it. Um, Two ways that, um, that are listed here are one is to use the CLI, which is um, either you can use like a 
uh, like a PowerShell, or um, like in this case, I'm using uh, like Mac, so I will be using uh, the uh, the CLI. You can use a command line tool, or you can use uh, our um, basically the Azure uh, user um, interface for that, the portal. So both are fine. Um, I will just quickly show you if you wanted to use, uh, let's say, let's go back here. If you wanted to create a new cluster, how you do that, you go in and you do Docker, you search for the Docker container service and it will come up. You will create. So basically the first thing you choose here is what type of orchestration engine you wanted to use. So you have three options here, DCOS, Kubernetes, and Swarm. And then you basically fill in the details. Um, if you wanted to do it through the command line, you can do that. And the way you do it is using the ACS command. And this is going to basically provide you a couple of options to do it. So both are fine. Um, when I'm working mostly with the IT pros and the admin, they like the command line, PowerShell or CLI. Uh, but when we're doing POCs and there's a mixed audience, they, they wanted to work with uh, uh, with this um, with this GUI. So what I did is I went through all this and I created two uh, different um, uh, clusters. I have one for the DCOS. Uh, so let me show you. Uh, I think I can show you easily. Right, right, the, right in the center. Uh, right in the center, this one? Well, that's DCOS. Is that what you're looking for? No, I wanted to show you first the Azure piece, and then we go to the actual interface that DCOS provides. Ah, so, okay. So, once you do like, well, I, ha I have to say that, but next, 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 you will end up into um, into the cluster itself. So I have two. So first, let's take a look at the DCOS, and the DCOS is right here. I will go in. So this is the resource group. Um, in the in the Azure containing all the resources that goes into creating them. We're not going to go in detail because it's a little bit more advanced, but what I wanted to talk a little bit about is um, is this service itself. So you will notice that this is what get deployed. So basically this is our container service. Um, it gives you access to some of the critical things like agents which actually going to run the containers. So We'll talk briefly about the architecture, uh, but the idea is that it eventually will end up with agents and uh, the VMs that are basically running all this workload. Now, in this case, we have the DCOS. So what I can do is I can uh, go ahead to the user interface or the portal provided by the DCOS itself. And this is exactly what it is. <laughs> so if you notice that I have this cluster running and it's, it's sort of like a dashboard. It's giving me a view into what's running right now. And what's running right now is really the minimal uh, set of resources uh, that you can, you wanted to start with. So you only have like um, a basic agent running the workload and a one master which basically managing it. Uh, and I can take a look at that, that we have two nodes here, one node right here, and the other one is this one. Uh, so if you wanted to look into the nodes, which are like the, particularly like a VM, you can look into like this view. Uh, we will be more interested in the services because remember, we are deploying multi-container application using Compose. We don't necessarily want to dive into the VMs and all that. That's, that's an important topic, but that's more infrastructure area. We want to look into like, hey, show me uh, my service, you know, hey, how it's running. And I already deployed it in the morning. So this is the view from the DCOS. So we have our demo web app and the demo web API. And um, we will actually run the entire build again. So you will see the entire proceedings, but this is the end result basically. But if I go in and select the web app, what I can do is I can look into this definition for this, um, this image right here. Notice that this is 73. This is the last successful build, 73 right here. I hope you can see it. Uh, so basically, whenever the build is going to run and the release will happen, it will go ahead and deploy our, uh, our containers right here. And this is going to be the image 
and it will basically have this tag representative of the build number. So you can actually see like if things are landing or not. If this doesn't change the next time I do the new build, then there's something wrong. I need to figure it out. Now you can do a couple of interesting things here. Um, if you wanted to just go and test it out, what I can do is I can simply go to the web app DC OS and um, because it's running and you can see that this is my app and it has the course uh, which is definitely connecting to the web API service and the the URL is interesting if you notice this URL right here this is the URL uh, of a load balancer that is provided by the Azure so we'll talk about the architecture momentarily a little bit but essentially when I'm hitting a endpoint I'm hitting a public load balancer um, that is provided by the ACS and that basically direct the request to the the DC OS cluster running our uh, container applications so if I go back here uh, what I can do is I can do a couple of things I can go in I can select one of these and I can scale it I can say well I right now there's basically only one instance of this running I can say run like five and when I say scale it will basically run five containers as a response so basically you can do this manually you can do this based on any other factor maybe based on the incoming request threshold maybe on demand uh, over the weekend you wanted to scale up or scale down and things like that so this is the DC OS piece now um, if you wanted to get in and see like how this is working what you can do is you can do the SSS tunneling into a particular agent and what I did here is I went in and let me open that so this is the DC OS agent let me clear it and if I do you will notice that when I do the pseudo docker images I have two containers running here one is the web app the other is the API and the tag is 73 and that's how I know that if I go in and just quickly look at it notice that 73 yep. and this is a service so we know now if I do a scale let's see what happens so what we did here is we scale this web app um, and now we have three instances running now this is important because um, based on the load and based on the demand you may want it to scale up and down and you can see that it basically went through and if you go into the nodes and look at the place where this is running we have multiple of these uh, web apps and I will just kill like one here um, and you will see that the um, the web app is um, a scale out and I can I can we can do real quick um, demo for the web API um, so if you go in and if you wanted to scale this one let's say we wanted to run three of these and you will notice that it will go ahead and deploy these and now if you go back we have way more containers running so you can manage all this and of course there's a command line that you can use you don't have to come here you can go and monitor all this so this is the sort of like a very quick recap or sort of like an overview of what DCOS can do and um, how you can basically utilize it the other one that we're going to use is uh, the uh, the swarm so the swarm uh, we start at pretty much the same way we go in and we either use the portal to create uh, the the container service and we select I will quickly do that so we can see it here and you can select this time we will select the swarm option right here or you can do the command line so you select that and this is what I did provide the details next 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 and you will end up with your swarm cluster now uh, the swarm cluster the easiest way to, do, to deal with it is actually through uh, the command line so we'll come back and look into it uh, when we actually do the release so what we'll do now is um, we will actually let me close this one let's go in and actually take a look at uh, actual build running so 
the way we do it is we will go into the code because we have the continuous integration set up. So I will go ahead and I have this readme and I will just change this readme. So this, this is a demo and I will just change this to exclamation point right here. And we save this and notice what happened. It will go ahead and it will kick start a build. And I can see that because if I go into the build, there's one in progress right here. I can go in and it will give you this view. And basically what's happening here is that it will go ahead and build an image and it will push it into our registry. And now if I go back to that VM that is running my agent, right? And if I do Docker images, notice that we have the web app, the tag is 74 and the 74 is our build number. And we have the web API with the 74. So we have these two. So that's, we know that now this is our agent because it's actually doing all the work. So the build seems to be successful, build number 74. And as a result, we will see the releases kicking off. So you can see that the, build, uh, the release 31 and 37 using the build 74 and they are running right now. So the DCOS is running first right now. So I will go in and uh, look into the releases. It will, um, it's completed. Uh, actually it's running right now. So just give it a minute here, logs. So we'll go ahead and exactly go through the A steps, deploy the artifact, run the containers. And um, if we go back to the cluster, we'll see that, that um, this uh, definition will change to uh, 274. And for the Docker Swarm, what I will do is that while it's doing the deployment, uh, we will go ahead and go and connect to the swarm and this is my swarm I SSH into it so I'm just opening the tunnel and what I will do is that I will do docker images and uh, you will see that soon we will have the 74 here and I will just make sure that I'm connected so I will actually share links to all these details. So I just I didn't come, it, um, come up with all this detail myself. They're all documented on the portal. So we basically go ahead and connect to one of the agents. We make sure that we have that. So let me copy this. All right. And I think it's still running. So once it's done, basically, we will go ahead and have the latest um, containers deployed on both of the clusters. And uh, if we look at it here, I think most likely this environment. Interestingly, we run now six of these, so we have quite a bit going on. Uh, still doing that. I think we, we have a lot more going on here. So that's why it's taking some time. But eventually this will go through um, this one. Yeah, it's in the queue right now. So depending on like how many containers are running and what the state your cluster is, it's probably gonna take a little bit of um, work for it to go through. Okay, while it's doing that, let's do this. Let's continue with this discussion here. Uh, because we wanted to cover one more piece here, which is the monitoring and analytics. Now, this is a broad topic. Um, I will mainly focus on Microsoft OMS, which is the operations management suite. Uh, we, res well, it's, it has a support right now uh, that you can use to, um, let me show you right here. It basically have a component that you can install and it will basically monitor your containers. And um, the way it actually does that is, is basically run a container in your cluster and actually have a service that monitors things. So you will notice that uh, you need to create a particular instance of a uh, operational management suite and uh, it will have this containers option right here. And uh, it basically gives you all the basic detail around like how many containers are running, uh, how many are deleted, how many are stopped. 
uh, you can actually go ahead and look into things like, for example, uh, specific agent related details. Uh, what, I, what I'm usually interested in, at least uh, when you deploy a new cluster and new uh, containers on it, is like how the particular uh, container is behaving. And uh, it will actually give you this information right here. So uh, all the errors and all the details will show up. Now you can actually go ahead and set up an alert for it if you want to. So you can set up an alert like, well, if this particular error happened, uh, I want to be notified through the email. So you can do a lot of like reactive work too. So that's just one option with, uh, with the OMS. But OMS is definitely one of the options out there. We have um, a lot of partners that are doing work. Datadog is um, another partner out there. Uh, they provide a monitoring service uh, and dashboard based matters. So you can see that right here. Uh, way more holistic. So you can look into the memory, the network traffic. Uh, they support DCOS and Kubernetes. We have um, Sysdig. Uh, it is mainly like a troubleshooting, but you can also use it for monitoring. Uh, it have the uh, uh, matters like uh, CPU, memory, network. Uh, they all basically, I think it depends on the preference too. And it also depends like what exactly you are looking for. Uh, so the OMS right now is great for uh, analytics. Uh, if you wanted to go and do a more troubleshooting type monitoring, then uh, probably Sysdig or, or uh, Datadog would be a good fit. Okay, let's go back here and see what's going on with our build. All right. so. Finally, it went through, and um, if you're a technical guy looking into the details, this is like a ton of information here that you can dig into, but what you really wanted to look into is that it go through or not, that's the first thing. Um, let's take a look at into the DCOS release right here. Uh, well, it seems like there's an issue with this. Let's see what the issue is. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, it has some issues because of the capacity because we are running a single VM. Uh, but if you go back and look at uh, the Swarm here real quick. Here we go. So Swarm, we have the Web API X74 and the Web API and Web App both have 74 running and this is basically the Swarm cluster. Now, normally, one thing that you do, um, because I scale quite a bit at <laughs> the DCOS cluster, which is too much to handle for a single VM, um, let me just scale down a little bit. Just curb my enthusiasm <laughs> with this. Um, so you can go ahead and then scale down. So we just run one. And, uh, and if you go ahead and run it again, most likely it will go through. But the idea is that, that you, um, let's actually just go and run it again. So you go in, I will select 74, and hopefully this will go through. Yeah, so it's probably gonna take a minute, so we can um, we can go back. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool All right, stuff. stuff. Yeah, so I guess to sum it up, um, we basically looked into predominantly VSTS, ACS for, of course, um, hosting and running these, and then some of these monitoring options that we have. Uh, one thing I do like to call out is uh, VSTS is certainly one option, great option. Um, if you want to use like Jenkins, if you wanted to use like regular Git, GitHub, you can use those tools and you can still deploy uh, your containers into the ACS. We have substantial amount of documentation around how you can integrate those tooling. So right now, the idea here is that, that you choose the tools that best fit you. It's not necessarily just have to be one particular tool. So if you want to use VCCDS, it's great. If you want to use uh, Jenkins, that's fine. We actually do have uh, pretty good uh, support for Jenkins on Azure too. So, the, the ACS itself will uh, will be completely agnostic of VSTS or Jenkins or any other third party tool. The only thing you really need is a command to connect to it and then deploy the containers on it. And we are basically using Compose uh, as a as basically de definition of our services. So that thing is consistent as long as there's a tool that can generate that and give it to um, give it to the cluster running on ACS, it will work. So that's the important point to remember. 
Yeah. yeah. All right. So this um, release went through. Um, as you can see, um, we are basically having this ACS DCOS release um, successful. If you go to the DCOS here, uh, go into the environment and um, look into our web app and the API. And remember that this is um, going to be, if we go back here real quick, um, build, it's a build number 74. So the image that we put into our Docker repo going to be tagged with 74. And um, we can quickly take a look at that. Uh, so if you go in, into the registry and look at the repositories here. We will have the web app and the API and we will have uh, 74 right here. So um, in the DCOS, we have the web app and the web API. And if I go in, look at this image here, it reflects that. So basically the deployment actually went through. Now, if you really wanted to go into a command line, you can do it. You can actually go in and run command like docker ps. And you will notice that, that we are running these particular containers right here. And of course we can go to the, uh, to the web app and um, we can refresh that and it will come back. So, Basically what we did, and we can actually go in and do the same thing again. We can go ahead and scale this uh, if you want to. If you want to run five copies of this, uh, or like five containers, we can do five. Um, I'm really pushing uh, the, the node that is running because um, I only have uh, one, uh, basically just two nodes actually. Um, so we'll notice that uh, every time I do this, it just have to scale it, but it does that. So. Yeah, so basically we have a build uh, triggering two different releases, two different targeting, two different platforms, and uh, and both of them are now run through. So this one is DCOS and the Swarm one. Yeah. So that concludes the demo. Okay. Well, that's really cool, man. Very informative. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Guys, listen, I know this was a long episode. I hope uh, you guys uh, stuck around and got a lot out of this. We're going to try and break this episode up into digestible chunks, uh, and we'll have everything tagged so that you can go to specific sections. Um, again, uh, Rozzy's, uh awesome as a presenter, and he's, uh, he's visited us several times now. And uh, so, Rozzy, thanks again. Uh, thanks a lot, and I really enjoy, um, you know, sharing the knowledge, and um, see you guys soon. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, guys, as far as I'm concerned, that's your taste of premiere.